Casey Gray here from The Conscious Builder and on today's video I'm going to share with you what I believe is the best way to heat your home. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button so you get all the notifications and all the great videos that we're putting out like this one here. All right, so let's start with the question, what are the options? How can you heat a home? Right, you can use natural gas, that's the most common these days. You can use oil, you can use propane, you can use wood, or you can use electricity. Now there's different ways in each one of those categories to heat it, but those are kind of the energy sources in order to get the heat into your home. Now it's no surprise to you, I'm sure, that I'm not gonna say, yeah, use a natural gas furnace or oil, whatever it may be. We are pushing for electricity. I believe using electricity is the best way to heat your home. Now there's different ways to use that electricity and that's what we're gonna get into here. So my decision for what I believe is the best option to heat your home is also taking into account the cost for the system, the upfront cost. Because obviously we can go to something like geothermal, but the upfront cost of that is significantly higher than some of the other options. Now, it also depends where you live. What are your electricity rates? And maybe where does the electricity come from too? So there's some arguments on going all electric, but you're still using electricity that's being produced by fossil fuels or coal or something like that. In our case, where we live, for the most part, we have a lot of hydroelectricity. So it's from dams. So that's, that's a good thing for us if we're using more electricity. My go-to option is air source heat pumps. They're extremely efficient and they're, they're way more efficient than a natural gas furnace or electric resistance. But what people seem to focus on is the cost. How much does it cost to operate this? How much does it cost to install it? So the cost to operate it here in Ontario should be about the same for home versus like a natural gas, your typical forced air natural gas furnace or an air source heat pump central air system. Unfortunately, it's about two to two and a half times more expensive to put in the air source heat pump central system versus your typical natural gas furnace. However, in my opinion, that's short-term thinking. It's short-term thinking because you're only thinking about the impacts today. You're not thinking about the impacts tomorrow, a year from now, five years from now. So let's look at the natural gas option. Natural gas right now, where we live, is cheap. That is why people go with that option because it's so cheap. But what happens if the price goes up next year or five years or whenever? It's going to continue to go up. It can't go lower. And hopefully, in my opinion, I think there should be a tax on it because we should be taxing the things that harm the environment that harm us and rewarding people for the options that actually help us. And in this case, it's going off of fossil fuels. So electricity right now, yes, it's more expensive where we live. However, if you, if you live somewhere like Quebec where electricity is a lot cheaper, air source heat pumps will actually maybe be the more cost effective option for heating your home. The great thing about air source heat pumps is that it also does your cooling. So you have one system that does your heating and your cooling with the furnace, for example, you have your furnace and then you have your separate AC unit. This is just gonna be one system and your AC is actually extremely efficient. So the way these work though are a little bit different than you would have as a natural gas furnace. So in a home with a natural gas furnace, you're gonna set your temperature, or let's, we're talking heating right now, right? So in the winter, you're gonna set your temperature higher during the day, and then you'll drop it down at night potentially to save some energy. That's not something you'll wanna do with an air source heat pump because the way they work is they wanna use as little energy as possible. So they have a modulating system and the, the temperature really fluctuates very little, but it uses as little energy as possible and keeps going. So if you turn it off, for example, say you had it set to 22 degrees Celsius and you dropped it down to 17 degrees Celsius at night, so that air source heat pump didn't come on, in the morning when it would have to come on, it would probably use the backup resistance heat, which is just the typical electric resistance heat, which is using a lot more energy than an air source heat pump so that your bill would cost more. So you'd actually wanna kinda of set it and forget it. Set it at a comfortable temperature, maybe drop it a little bit at night if you really want to, but you don't wanna drop it so much that that backup heat has to kick in in order to get the temperature up as quickly as possible. Because yes, an air source heat pump, if your home is designed properly, can heat your home with whatever heat it needs, however, it is going to take longer to heat than lighting the flame when that's what, because that's what natural gas does. The other great thing with air source heat pumps is that you have options. It's not just one central furnace. You can actually have what's called mini splits. So you could have wall mounted units, you could have floor mounted units, you could have ceiling cassettes. So you could actually put zones around your home. So you could have a wall mounted unit in one bedroom, you could have a cassette in another room, for example, or a floor mounted unit, and you could have them set at different 
different temperatures. So if you're like my wife and I, where we like the bedroom colder, we can set the mini split in our bedroom to off if we don't even want heat in there because it actually maintains enough heat. Or if you, you can set it to colder in the summer, for example, if you like to sleep colder, or you can just turn it on when you need it. The mini splits will not have the backup resistance, but the central units will. So you don't have to worry about on or off with those units themselves. You can also do a semi-ducted system where you have like a ceiling cassette and then you duct off of that. So you can have zones through your floor. So yes, we're talking about options that are more expensive. However, it does give you more flexibility. So it's the same technology as liquid to air as opposed to air to air. Now the downside to something like geothermal is that you can't get the air conditioning with it as well. So yes, you don't have the duct work, but most people want air conditioning. So you always have to balance and figure out the best system for your desired purposes. Some other options could be heated panels, so radiant panels. So we've done radiant mirrors in bathrooms before, heated towel bars. You can also do heated floors, which is either electric resistance or if you get into radiant, like with the geothermal, but you can also do air to water systems. So you could have uh, a heat pump that's taking it from the air and actually put it into the, into the water and have a complete heated floor system. But once again, it's a more expensive system. So it depends on what you're going after. And with the mini splits, you have to get heat into each room, at least where we are here in Ontario. Technically, the code says you have to have heat in every room that has an exterior wall, which makes it a little bit more difficult with the mini splits. And that's where we might introduce something like a ceiling panel or a picture that's heated, for example, or a heated towel bar or heated floors in the bathrooms, for example, because that's a nice feature to have anyways. And because the homes that we built are so airtight and so, so comfortable, we don't need as much heat and we don't have as much fluctuations in the types of homes that we do. The last thing I want to touch on is the fact that you can't offset a natural gas bill or a propane bill or whatever it is that you're using if it's not electricity. You can offset an electricity bill. You can put solar panels on your roof and offset it. So even if you don't plan on doing solar panels now, maybe you're going to do it in five years from now. If you're playing, oh, you know what, Casey, I'm never going to do that. What if there's an incentive that comes out again? What if solar panels just become so efficient and so cheap that it just makes sense to put them on your roof so that you can offset your bill? You know, I, I actually believe that where technology is going, it's actually going to be cheaper to put solar panels on our roof and heat our house with something like air source heat pump than it is to actually improve the envelope of the home. So a 100 year old leaky house might actually be able to heat and cool itself for free over the span of a year, right? When you model everything out because of the way technology is going. Now that doesn't solve a lot of the other issues in terms of health and comfort within the home, but it does reduce one of the things that we have to worry about, which is our electricity bill or our utility bills, as well as our consumption. If you're watching this and you're from Ontario, I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not, but Ontario has plans to expand its fossil fuel energy plans, which actually goes against everything that we're talking about here. It goes against everything that we're working for, not only us here at The Conscious Builder, but us as a population, as a world population in the direction that we know we have to go. So if you're in Ontario, be sure to reach out to your counselor, your MP, and let them know that you are not for this. This is not something that's going to help us in the long run. Once again, this is short-term thinking, and we need to get rid of short-term thinking if we're gonna help ourselves in the future. Glad you tuned in until the very end. If you wanna dig deeper into why we need to get off of fossil fuels, check out this short clip with Bob Deeks, who's another builder here in Canada, but on the west coast. Be sure to like this, share this with your friends and family, comment below whether you agree or not agree. We want to keep this conversation going. It's an important conversation to have and it's not something we need to beat around the bush on. So thank you again and remember to live consciously.